Hello, I am Christine Marie Quigless, the Period Empress, and I am so excited to welcome you to our phase-specific yoga class. Today, we are focusing on peacemaker phase. If you're not in the collective, this is the phase when we move from follicular to ovulation to early luteal phase. It is a time when a lot of energy is flowing through us. Our body is physiologically set up to get out there and play and engage with others. But temperance is also very important in anything that we do. If we didn't have brakes on our bikes, we'd have a tough time navigating through city streets. We need the same thing for our body. So for those of you who are looking to cultivate a daily practice, you are probably following our series as they are published you know, on that timeline. And you'll notice that the last two series of poses that I offered were quite vigorous, very strong, yang oriented. Today, we're gonna focus more on yin, but we're in peacemaker phase, which means we're gonna be doing a yin that is suited to peacemaker. Very specific, very different from what we would do for a yin in menstrual phase, what we call in the collective priestess phase. So. We're going to start with a 10 to 20 minute yoga practice for those of you who want to do daily yoga or for those of you who are not in the, in the collective yet, but want to have a phase specific yoga class. And then for those of us in the collective, we're going to continue with a lovely yin class. So to integrate yin with this short series, we're going to do very intentional poses today. That means we're going to hold them for quite some time very in. We're going to hold them for quite some time, and I'm going to give you cues that will help you deepen into your pose. It doesn't mean you have to hold them for as long as I'm offering, but I would like you, as always, to focus on your breath and to focus on the integrity of the pose. It is more important that you listen to the cues your body is giving you, that you work no higher than 80% uh, of what it's taking you to make the pose, so that you can expand organically into the poses and not cheat yourself of how far and how, how deep you can experience each pose. So let's begin. We're gonna start at the top of our mat. We're going to push down through the three points on our feet. Those are the two points that make up the far edges of the balls of your feet. And if you wanna feel that, those two points, Lift your toes, and that will ground you into the balls of your feet. And then the, the apex of these triangles I'm talking about are the heels. Pushing through the heels, pushing through those two points, you are solidly anchored in your peaceful warrior pose. Feeling the energy of the earth that's pushing against you because every action has an equal and opposite reaction, you are more strongly rooted. And from here, we're going to push down, root to rise, and bring our arms, reverse swan dive, bring our arms up and overhead, letting them meet in prayer overhead, slight back bend, and then we're going to bring the hands through prayer, through the center of our body, through our heart center, and leave our hands at heart center as we bend over our feet. Bend your legs, unless you're super, super flexible. Bend your legs. This is the first pose we, we've done today. Bend your legs to support your body so that it can relax over your thighs. Let the head hang over. Let the arms come towards the ground. If the hands are touching the ground, make that intentional as well. Make sure that your fingers are activated so they're so slightly clawing the ground. And that clawing action protects your wrists. Also make sure that the hands are meeting the ground with an L shape. So on the left, it'll make an L. On the right, it'll make a reverse L. But make sure that you have that position with your hands because this is your preparation for handstand. Everything we're doing is preparation for something else. All of it flows and ultimately begins and ends with Shavasana. So push now, push your two hands into your shins. And with that push, allow your back to come to flat, letting your gaze rest 
on the ground. You're looking at the ground and you're feeling that flat back, letting the shoulders stay pinned towards the core. Whether we are inverted, standing upright, laying on the ground, we always can know, can anchor ourselves and especially our shoulders by making sure that they pin towards our core. Another way to think about it is to keep our shoulders always, always, always away from our ears. Inhale here. Exhale, fold back down and grab your calf muscles to help pull your body closer to your legs, bending your legs if you don't easily, 80% effort, have them straight. Put both hands on the ground and I'd like you to take the right foot and slowly, slowly, slowly move that right foot towards the back of the mat and we're going to land in lunge. That means the toes are both facing the front of the mat, the front short side of the mat. Our hands are already, as I stated before, our knee is at a 90 degree angle. It's directly above the heel. And now bring that right leg towards straight, not locked. Anchor into those points of contact with the ground. The hands, the triangle on the first foot, the ball of the foot on the right foot, letting the heel fly its flag, fly in the air. And now ground down into just the feet and find your way, letting the hands either come to the hips or reach for the sky, find your way into Anjane Asana. Feeling the square hips, feeling the grounding into the earth, feeling that 90 degree relationship between the thigh and the bottom of the leg and the foot. Now I'd like you to reach your arms up towards the sky and I want you to rotate your right foot. Lean just a little bit farther forward into your left leg, into all that's happening on your left side. And I want you to rotate that right foot to let yourself end up in warrior one keeping the feeling of that squareness pushing into the front leg shortening your pose if you need to so that the foot can be flat on the ground that flatness that emphasis on flatness is going to help anchor you and you can use that pushing into the back foot to create more space as you square your hips it really allows you to twist and find that squareness for your pelvis towards the front of your mat. Inhale, look through the two hands. Bring the hands over your head to prayer. Take a slight back bend. Exhale, open the hands again. Bring your gaze back so that it is looking forward. Gaze is neutral. Let's inhale, and now we're going to rotate our hips so that the headlights are now facing the long side of the mat. If you are facing your, I mean, if you are using the screen that you're watching this from as your gauge, you're going to be facing away from the screen to open to warrior two. You're going to need to expand your stance because warrior two accommodates, requires a little bit more space. It's great to try to keep that nine, excuse me, 90 degree relationship with the front knee over the heel and to keep that relationship of pushing into the nice edge of that right foot, pushing through those places of contact feeling the power of the earth to know that you're not efforting this pose. You're not doing it alone. You're channeling the energy of the earth through the pose. Let the shoulders rest pinned towards the core. Let the arms unfold. 
Let your gaze look over your left arm. And let a slight pull, pull your right hand back. Most of us kind of lean forward in warrior two. Let your right hand pull you back just a little bit so that you're centered in this pose. To stay here and to feel like you're not struggling. Also, you can feel the, you can, you can uh, think of the feet pulling towards each other. And that requires you to in, engage the inner thighs. And that engagement is gonna create an even more solid structure. All this energy channeled through calm and stillness. Yes, we can have a lot of energy, but that doesn't mean we have to flail and burn it, burn through it. We can channel it. Inhale, lengthen. Let the stretch happen in every direction, through the arms, down through the feet, rooting to rise through the upper body, keeping the shoulders down, feeling that expansion. Exhale. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, stay in reverse warrior, hooking that shoulder tip, that left shoulder tip towards your core. Inhale. Exhale, unfold back to warrior two. Inhale, bring the right hand to trace an arc of a rainbow across the sky, bringing it towards the front of the mat and letting the left arm rest on your thigh for extended angle pose. Make sure here to hook that shoulder tip into the core, towards the core, allowing the right hand to reach without locking it. And make sure to, to really ground down into that moment where the thigh meets the pelvis and keep that nice and square. That's gonna provide stability for you. Inhale here, exhale. Inhale, reaching up, 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 unfold back to warrior two. Exhale. Inhale, bring both hands down towards the ground to either side of the left foot, rotating your foot back to this lunge. Exhale. Inhale, look up to the sky, deepen into the lunge. Feel the stretch in that hip flexor. Exhale, step that right foot to meet the left with as little contact with the earth as possible lightly, delicately taking that step. Exhale. Inhale. Right where you are. Exhale. Grab the backs of your calves to fold forward. Inhale. Rooting to rise. Reverse swan dive. Arms come up overhead. Meeting in prayer. Slight back bend. Exhale. Arms come to prayer. Inhale. Arms unfold and hands come to either side of the body. Exhale. Feeling the end of that sequence. Inhale, let's begin. Arms up overhead. This side has nothing to do with what you did before. Exhale, arms come to prayer overhead. Then move through the center of the body, through the heart center, towards forward fold, bending the knees as much as you need. And now that we're warm, you may not bend them as much. 80% effort is key here. Inhale, two hands press against the shin, flat back. Exhale, fold, grabbing the calves to pull your body in a little bit more. Inhale, hands come to the ground. Left foot moves back, 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 back to lunge. Acknowledging the points of contact with the earth. Feeling the power of this lunge on the other side. Exhale, stay here. Inhale, rooting to rise. Hands come up, staying parallel to each other, keeping the squareness in those hips. 
anchoring through that back foot to enable that squareness, Anjane Asana. Exhale, let it release and deepen through the pose here. Let's take one more breath here, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, rotate that back foot so that the knife's edge is now facing the back of the mat, keeping the squareness in those hips. This is your warrior one. Inhale, let your gaze rise between the hands and let them come to prayer with a slight back bend, pushing into that front foot to keep the integrity of this pose, keeping that twist, keeping that squareness. Exhale, letting the arms open, letting the gaze come back to neutral. Inhale, two arms reaching up, 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 up. The body rotating now towards the screen, expanding that stance so that you can really luxuriate in what warrior two has to offer. Grounding through the feet, exhale. Inhale, stretching in both directions, through the arms horizontally, through the feet and the spine, through the crown of the head vertically, letting the gaze reach over the right hand. Exhale. Inhale, flip that right palm to face the sky. And now let's do a, a mild back bend, stretching the right side body in, war, in reverse warrior. Pinning that right shoulder tip towards the ground, leaning more into that front leg. Because you're moving backwards, you're gonna want the whole body to move back and this will protect the integrity of your warrior too. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, unfold that pose, the reverse warrior back to warrior two, exhale. Inhale, allow that left hand to trace the rainbow across the sky, letting your left side body stretch, pinning your right shoulder tip towards your core, away from your ears, letting your right forearm rest on your right thigh feeling the power of, of extended angle pose. Exhale, luxuriating, deepening into the pose. Inhale, grounding through those feet. Exhale. Inhale, unfolding back to warrior two. Exhale. Inhale, two hands come to either side of your right foot. Back foot, rotate so that the heel is back in the ground and we're in lunge, exhale. Inhale, deepen your lunge, look up at the sky. Exhale. One more inhale here. Exhale, lightly bringing the back foot as gently as you can towards the front of the mat. Can you see how this is preparation for handstand? Putting all that energy into the hands at once. Exhale. And my dog has decided to do a little growling. Inhale, pushing against the shins. Exhale, folding forward, fold folding towards the shins. Inhale, rooting to rise. Hands meet overhead, it's like back bend. Exhale, hands come to prayer at the heart center. Inhale, hands unfold, body expands through this passively vigorous pose. Exhale. And that concludes your series for today. For all members of the collective who are staying, 
we are now going to go into the yen part of our work for today.